Welcome back to On Shape Orientation. Today we're going to be using the use, the intersection, and the construction tools. So um, use and intersection need to have some existing geometry. So what I did is I drew up a real quick sketch of uh, a gasket, kind of extruded it in two parts to where I had these five studs um, of four of the same size, one of a different size. And we are going to reuse that geometry without having to redraw all of it. So we're going to start a sketch like we normally do on the top plane. But instead of the top plane this time, we're going to start on the top of our drawing. So you see how I clicked that face. We see where our existing geometry is down here uh, on the top plane like we originally drew. But now we have this up here. So use is cool um, because in most instances people just want to copy and paste uh, however if you copy the whole sketch you're copying the whole sketch and you might not need the whole sketch so in this um, demonstration I'm going to show you I want to click everything that I do want to keep so I'm going to click the five studs and then I will go up here and click use or if you look the letter U is the shortcut key on the keyboard. And again, it's to project edges or faces of an existing part or sketch onto the active sketch plane. So if I click that, you will see now, if we shut our parts off, it's a little easier to see, that I had my first sketch down at the bottom on the top plane in a uh, light gray, where the darker black circles are now what we have projected up to the top surface without having to redraw the whole thing. Uh, but we're gonna make a second part on here and I want to draw a big circle around all of this. We'll make it 7.5, not 1.5. We'll make it 7.5. There we go. And you'll see now I'm using that same geometry to make a new feature and I'm going to go up to the bottom face right here and make sure that it's a new instance, not adding to it. And you will see that I have two pieces that fit snugly together um, to using the same geometry without having to redraw all those pieces. Now, very simple drawing, not too bad to redraw if I had to, but save time, save yourself some time without having to redraw stuff. Um, if you take a look, this is perfect. They fit snugly together, but it's the exact same geometry. So one thing to notice is if you are gonna use these things to cut out, um, set some offsets because these exist in the same area right now and if you don't build in your tolerances when you're making some actual parts these won't fit together in the real world if that's what you're looking for so that is our use feature um, we have another part studio here we're going to use the intersection feature for so we're going to start a new sketch on the top plane and you'll see that that sketch two window that pops up is going to slice my little donut wheel bearing thing, whatever you want to call it, right through the middle. Now, if I go over and use the intersection tool, any face I click, I will bring in that geometry that makes that uh, portion of that project. So if we look, instead of drawing just one copy, I got two because it's projecting the cross section of that. Once I use my intersection, I now have two drawings on one sketch of how that piece would go. If it was a different shape, obviously I'd get a lot more, more stuff, but this is what that intersection would look like. So for this demonstration, I'm gonna act as if we wanna add a big hole right in the center on that point. Um, how do you find the center of a really round object? Um, I don't know the math around it, uh, and this is how this would help you get through there. So if you're able to, to get this geometry, you can measure an inside and outside and, and some sort of flange, you are now able to extrude, and you can make some pieces. Let's pick just our center, turn our part back on, and we're going to say remove symmetrical through everything. And now I have holes either for mounting, uh, putting bolts through, whatever you may need, but there's no way I was gonna ever find that center or hope that I got close and I would have to draw it way up above and then kind of eyeball it and doing a lot of guessing and checking. So that's how you do that intersection 
feature. Now I'm going to show you what the construction tool is for. So I started a sketch on the top plane and we are going to start with some existing geometry. So in my college years, when I was going through some uh, drafting classes, every single time we had to draw something in AutoCAD, our teacher made us draw, start with some construction lines. So if I draw a line through here, like normal, you'll notice that it's just a normal solid line. But if I press the letter Q, it'll turn to that dotted construction line, okay? So I'm gonna draw one there. We'll draw one on the X axis. So we have my X and Y construction planes. If I wanted to draw a circle, I know everything needs to match that construction. Maybe I need that to be a construction line as well. I'm gonna make a hub of some sort. Um, so I would select that line. I already drew it uh, as a solid. I can press the letter Q and it will change it to a construction line and vice versa. If I actually wanted this line to be a solid line and not a construction line, I can always just go back. I don't have to use the control Z undo or the undo arrow up at the top real quick. Q uh, will change it to construction or not. Um, any of our drawings up here, anything we drew, rectangles, splines, arcs, rec uh, circles, polygons, they all can be turned into a construction feature. Um, so just go ahead and draw whatever one you need. And if you need a, some sort of construction template, that's how you would go about doing it. I tell my students that our construction features are used and construction lines are used for building things, right? When things are under construction, you'll see the scaffolding on the outside of a building. That scaffolding doesn't stay there forever and it doesn't actually stay a part of the finished part just like these construction lines will not stay a part of the finished part. So if we go to actually draw something, let's make that, we'll do a little hub really quick. I'll start one on this feature here. We'll do two inches. I'm going to turn this back into a construction line. We'll do a circular pattern of my circles and we will add about 10 holes. You will see that when I go to extrude this, I get only the geometry that were solid lines gets extruded. If I go back into my sketch and I turn this into a regular line, you'll see our geometry changes significantly. So be aware of what is a construction line and what is not. When you actually go to export this as a file, if you leave it as a solid line, it will cut that line. I've had some friends that we've made some stuff for, um, cut out some barbecues and the fold lines were supposed to be dotted, but whenever they imported them into their uh, program, their cutting program, it turned them into solid lines and then it just cut a bunch of pieces where we did all this work to make sure all you had to do was fold it apart, fold it up. Um, it cut out six pieces instead of one big piece. So be, pay attention to that. Um, that's going to be it for the use, the construction and the intersection uh, tools. Next week, I'm going to start looking at the sketch fillet and some of my favorite tools, the trim and the extend. If you're doing a lot of art editing work, this is where it's at. Trim is the one that, you know, you don't want to delete a whole line. You only want to trim part of it off. That's where you would use that trim tool. So we'll go over that next week. Um, again, if there's any comments you guys have, any things you think that I should be going over a little more in depth, let me know down in the comments. Message me on Instagram, here on YouTube, whatever. Um, keep watching these things and keep practicing. That's the only way you're going to get better at Onshape. So thanks for watching. See you guys next week.